In this video, I'm going to walk through the second AQA GCSE required practical, which is a neutralisation reaction. Here's the general equation for a neutralisation reaction. An acid reacts with an alkali to form a salt and water. I'm going to be reacting sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide to form sodium sulfate and water. And you can see here a word equation and a balanced symbol equation. Now in this practical we have a known volume of sodium hydroxide and we also know its concentration. By doing what's called a titration we can measure the volume of sulfuric acid required to neutralize the sodium hydroxide and we can also calculate the concentration of sulfuric acid. First of all I need to measure out 25 centimeters cubed of the known concentration sodium hydroxide. I'm going to use this piece of equipment and I've frozen the video here so we can look at it more closely. This is a volumetric pipette that is specifically designed to measure out 25 millilitres of liquid. You can see this pipette has what we call a tolerance or an inaccuracy range of plus or minus 0.06. This means that when the apparatus is used in the correct way you can end up with 0.06 millilitres more or less than the 25 mils it was designed to measure. By comparison, a 25 millilitre measuring cylinder has an inaccuracy range of plus or minus 0.5. So the volumetric pipette will give us a more accurate measurement. I've used centimetres cubed and millilitres interchangeably here because they're equal units of volume. You should fill the liquid up to the line on the pipette using a pipette filler. This should be placed on very carefully to avoid accidents with the fragile glass. Here I am filling the pipette with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. I'm going to skip ahead to show you how you know when you filled the pipette to the right volume. As you can see, the solution is exactly on the line. Now you have to make sure you get your eyes level with this line to see it accurately. If you look at it from above, like I'm showing now, it's going to look too full, so you'll more than likely have to bend down slightly to get your eyes on the same level as the line to see when you've filled the pipette to the right volume. Now your pipette is accurately filled, you need to empty its contents into a conical flask. To do this, you should take off the pipette filler and let the solution drain under gravity. Our indicator for this titration is going to be methyl orange. I've set up a beaker of alkali on the left and a beaker of acid on the right. I'm adding a few drops of methyl orange to both so you can see the colour in each. Our sodium hydroxide solution to begin with is going to be the colour on the left and we're slowly going to add acid so that it neutralizes. We need to stop after the exact drop that turns the solution from yellow to the color on the right. That's the moment the solution has turned from an alkali just about to an acid, and so neutralization has occurred. Here I'm adding five to 10 drops of the methyl orange indicator to the conical flask, which contains 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide. Next, I need to fill the burette with sulfuric acid. To do this, I first need to make sure that the tap is closed. At the moment, this tap is closed, but if I turn it 90 degrees, you can see the tap runs in line with the burette. This means the tap is open and any liquid you put in can just flow straight out. So make sure the tap is perpendicular to the burette before you fill it. For safety, a burette should not be filled from above your eye line, so you may need to put it on a stool whilst you fill it. So here I am filling the burette with the sulfuric acid of an unknown concentration. You don't need to fill it until the solution exactly reaches zero, because you're going to record the starting and end points. Now that my burette is filled, I'm going to take the funnel out and read where the solution goes up to. Remember, you need to read from the bottom of the meniscus. 
you should give a burette reading to two decimal places where the second decimal place is either a zero or a five, depending on whether the meniscus is on a graduation or between two graduations. I'm reading this as being on the 0.3 graduation, so the reading would be 0.30 centimetres cubed. Now that everything is prepared, you can set up your apparatus like so, and make sure you have a white towel under the flask so you can see the colour change easily. I'm now starting the titration, using one hand to carefully open the tap, and the other to swirl the flask. When you start to see the pinky red colour linger slightly longer, it means the solution is approaching neutralisation and you should start adding the acid more slowly, drop by drop. At this point, it started to look like the colour change was there, or almost there. Because it seems slightly ambiguous, I took the acid beaker with indicator in it from earlier to compare the colours. It still wasn't quite the right red, so I kept going cautiously, adding the acid dropwise. Now you can see the solution has reached the correct red colour, so the titration stops there. Now you need to note down the final reading of sulfuric acid to two decimal places. So here are my readings from the titration. To work out the volume of sulfuric acid that's required to neutralise the sodium hydroxide, what you do is you minus the starting volume from the end volume. So that would be 3.5 minus 0 0.3 and that volume is 3.20 centimetres cubed. And do make sure you give your answers to two decimal places. What you would do next is repeat that titration two more times so you have three different values for the volume of sulfuric acid required to neutralise the sodium hydroxide. You would find the mean of those values. So to do that, you would add up your three results and then divide that by three. That would be your answer. That would be the volume required um, to neutralise sodium hydroxide. Now we're going to work out the concentration of the sulfuric acid, and this is a higher tier requirement. So the way I like to do it is by drawing a table like this. Across the top of the table, you have got the reaction equation. And I've put everything down, so the reactants and the products, even though we're not actually going to use these two columns. And that's because you've got to make sure that you've got a balanced equation. So we've got one mole of sulfuric acid reacting with two moles of sodium hydroxide this forms one mole of um, sodium sulfate and two moles of water. Down the left hand side we have concentration, volume, moles and mole ratio. And we're going to use all of these to work out the concentration of sulfuric acid finally. And we're going to start in this order. So you start with what you know. We used a known concentration of sodium hydroxide. We know the volume that we put in the conical flask. We can work out the number of moles. Then we do the mole ratio and we come over here like a curve or like a smiley face and you work out the number of moles of sulfuric acid. We know the volume from the titration and finally you get the concentration of sulfuric acid. So tables like this are really good because it's really clear the order that you work things out in this curve shape. So let's start the calculation and we're going to start where the arrow starts with the concentration of sodium hydroxide. That was a known concentration and it was 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. 
We also used a known volume. We put 25 centimetres cubed into the conical flask. Now we want this in decimetres cubed. So to convert from centimetres cubed to decimetres cubed, we need to divide by a thousand. Okay, so to get from here to here, we just divided by 1000. To work out the number of moles, N, you do concentration times volume. The concentration was 0 0.1 and the volume in decimeters cubed is 0 0.025. So the number of moles is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, the mole ratio, you look at the balanced equation that you've got on the top. Here, we've got two moles of sodium hydroxide, and that reacts with half the amount of sulfuric acid, only one mole of sulfuric acid. That means if we've actually got 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of sodium hydroxide, we need to half that to find the moles of sulfuric acid. So it's 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 2, which is 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. The volume of sulfuric acid is what we measured from our burette, and we just found that to be 3.20 centimetres cubed. Again, we need to convert that to decimeters cubed by dividing by a thousand. So that gives us 3.2 times 10 to the minus 3 decimeters cubed. Concentration we can work out by doing the number of moles divided by the volume. So we've just worked out we've got 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 moles and our volume in decimeters is 3.2 times 10 to the minus 3. And that gives us 0.39 moles per decimeter cubed. So that is the concentration of sulfuric acid. So that's the neutralization required practical. I have plenty more videos that go through the other AQA required practicals and you can find those on my channel.